Elden Ring is what us gamer folk refer to as a third person game. Third person means that you can see the world around you and you can see your character at the same time. Thanks to a cool mod made by some very talented people, you can turn Elden Ring from third person to first person. You're no longer looking from behind your character, but you're now essentially looking out of their eyes and seeing what they see. This of course begs the question, is Elden Ring better in third person or first person? Well, I feel pretty well versed in classic third person Elden Ring, so today I'm gonna beat the game in first person and compare notes to see which perspective is a better experience. Now, because we're in first person and I won't really see my character, I tried to make him really ugly. And no shade to William Macy, but I accidentally made him look like Frank Gallagher from Shameless. So, though I normally include Dump in my character's names, this time I just called him Frank. When I spawned in, I kind of freaked out because I totally forgot I was doing this in first person. This is, uh, definitely gonna take some getting used to. It really doesn't look all that bad though, just much different than what I'm used to. I also figured I'd better try using mouse and keyboard instead of controller because that's how I typically play a first person game. I was still getting my sea legs when I walked into the Grafted Scions arena. There were two things that immediately stood out to me. One, I couldn't really lock onto him in any meaningful way, so I had to be hyper vigilant about where I was looking, and two, I was having a really hard time judging distance. I was getting hit when I really felt like I shouldn't be, and that's because I'm just so used to being able to see my character. Needless to say, I died. Right to the stranded graveyard, I decided to take on a much less challenging boss. On my way to Rick's room, I got shot by by an arrow and it took up a ton of my screen space. It went away, but I was a little worried that things like this might become an issue. I stepped up to Rick and felt much different than how I would normally feel walking into this fight. Normally, I'd be calm and confident. I mean, he's the easiest boss in the game. But this time, being actually face to face with him, I was a little nervous and ended up dying. I shook it off though and remembered that this isn't a different game, just a different perspective and I bodied him on my first try. For fun, I tried turning the head tracking for rolling on and if you're easily dizzied or have vertigo or something, I recommend looking away from a second because this is downright horrendous. I see why it's off by default. I took the elevator up out of the graveyard, lifted the door to Limgrave, and felt a little disappointed. The game still looks great, don't get me wrong, but I think that some of the magic of the reveal was lost without being able to see my character. The image of your character in front of such a huge backdrop is part of the wow factor of this moment. Vare looked good though. Well, I mean, actually he looked really scary, but you know. I pushed my luck right away by challenging the tree sentinel. This is where I started to feel some new issues come up. First, getting hit with this mod is super jarring. I kind of like it because it makes it feel like you really got hit, but it takes some adjusting to. Secondly, getting up close when fighting makes it pretty hard to tell what's going on, and the only reason I could even sort of dodge his attacks was because I had the timings and sound cues down pretty well. I gave up on that fight pretty quickly. I needed some smaller potatoes, so I made my way north a bit and stepped up to the Beastman of Faramazula. This guy is another boss who I typically wouldn't break a sweat over, but Again, being up close and personal makes everything seem scarier. The fight was a much more challenging and honestly more fun experience than I expected it to be. Before I could fight any more bosses, I wanted to talk to Melina. She appeared in all of her first person glory and gave me the ring for Torrent. I've gotta say, I don't really love riding Torrent in first person. No biggie though, I've got much bigger issues to take care of. The issue in question is Margit. I went straight to Margit because I have no self control and I got absolutely annihilated. He was way above my current skill level and and like the tree sentinel, I bailed. I also bailed on the whole mouse and keyboard thing. It just didn't feel right playing Elden Ring without a controller, and I started feeling much more comfortable. I talked to Ronnie, I killed the stone digger troll, and then Melina decided I was cool enough to go to the cool kids round table. There was something I had to see in first person while I was here. Nice. I went out after this and killed a good handful of folks. I was slowly getting used to the whole first person thing, but I wasn't as powered up as I wanted to be, so I went to the Weeping Peninsula and got some flask upgrades. I tested my new strength against the Erdtree Avatar and it went pretty well. Well enough for me to believe that I could beat Margit. I was most definitely wrong about that, but I was at least putting up a fight this time around. I needed to be even stronger to make this one happen, so I went and died to Narius a bunch before finally killing him, bullying Patches, and killing the big dragon in 
Kaelid for some runes. I got about 100k, I leveled up a bunch, and with the great sword I picked up earlier, I was finally able to put the hands to market. I was still getting hit way more than I needed to be, but I was hitting harder than him now, and I outlasted him. I can't say it being in first person made it any better, but it was my first big victory. Surely Godric would be tougher though, right? Well, let's be honest. No. The run to Godric was much tougher than the actual fight. I'm very comfortable against Godric, and I also switched to the Uchi Katana, which I'm also very comfortable with, so even when he was blowing fire at me, I just kept my proper distance and made sure I didn't get hit by any attacks too big. I'd say I enjoyed this fight with Godric, and I didn't really feel like the first person thing made much of a difference for me. Then of course I killed Gostok, because that guy. Like I said, I'm comfortable with the Uchi, but I wanted a bigger version, so I murdered Yura in cold blood. The Nagakiba, the sword Yura drops, has a much better hitbox than the Nagakiba, so it should prove helpful, especially in first person. Too bad I don't have enough dexterity to use it yet. That's awkward. I focused on getting breaded up for a bit. I duplicated Godric's Remembrance, I killed the Tree Sentinel, I cheesed the Knight's Cavalry and Kaelid, I killed another Erdtree Avatar, and after killing the Crystallion for the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 1, I could finally use the Nagakiba. I upgraded it and took it straight to the academy. I was pretty nervous about the Red Wolf, to be honest. He moves around a lot, so he might be hard to track, he summons magic swords that you have to watch out for, and he's overall pretty tough to hit. That all being said, I beat him on my first try. I'm genuinely pretty shocked about that one. Also shocking was how badly Moongrum pushed my shit in. I had to really dial in to get rid of him. I wasn't exactly prepared for that. I did feel pretty prepared for Renala, though, our next major boss. Her first phase went about as well as you'd expect. I mean, it's pretty much just a cutscene that leads to her second phase. And this arena in first person was very, very cool. Her magic also felt much more threatening when it was coming directly at my face. Other than that though, I had a good time. If I had to say if I prefer this fight in third or first person, I might for the first time say that I actually prefer the fight in first person. Maybe this isn't such a silly question after all. Now I didn't exactly make this clear at the start of the video, but to make sure I'm being thorough with this little experiment, I'm gonna defeat all of the shard bearers. In my mind, the next one would be the great General Radon. To actually start the festival, I got the Dectus halves, took the lift, hit a Grace and Altus, and then journeyed to Redmain Castle. Running through the entrance was pretty cool, but I didn't waste any time getting right to the big man himself. Yeah, the arrows are scary in first person. Right away, those two problems that I mentioned earlier, the not being able to judge distance problem and the not being able to tell what's going on when I'm up close problem, reared their ugly heads. Radon is just a big guy, so he takes up a lot of the screen and his swords are deceptively big. My first try was not exactly successful. It took a few more tries to get him to his second phase and when he came crashing down to the ground, it was about as cool as you'd imagine. What did me in on that attempt was him hitting me really hard. <laughs> Crazy, I know. After a few more more tries, I got him back to his second phase, and though it was quite the f***ing spectacle to see him essentially flying around, I kept my head on straight and took his off. It was brutal, it was very good looking, but I certainly would not say that this is a better fight in first person. If anything, it made it way too hard to keep up with him, and I ended up using a lot of sound cues to dodge his attacks. But that's three shard bearers down and four more to go, not to mention actually beating the game. To get into the capital, I first have to beat the Draconic Tree Sentinel, and let me tell you, this guy took me forever to kill. He just has very solid all-around resistances, so I was having a really hard time damaging him. I ended up dual wielding my katanas, and that helped me get some extra damage in and eventually secured me the win there. Entering Lane Dell itself was pretty cool, but like the Limgrave reveal, it did feel like the scale was different than it would otherwise be, and I think that dampened it a little bit. Gold Free, the roadblock to Morgoth, was actually really easy. Well, okay, it wasn't easy because it was in first person, it was just easy because I'm really good at this fight. It actually was a little harder in first person, because again, and I'm gonna keep bringing it up, I couldn't actually see what the f*** was happening. Still though, I won. <sighs> Morgoth would not prove to be as simple, not even close. Morgoth beat me down, stomped on me, spit on me, rolled me up into a joint and one dragged me. I was getting absolutely, positively obliterated. I felt like I had hit a wall here. Morgoth is a lot faster and more agile than most of the other bosses I'd fought thus far, and I was really struggling to keep my eyes on him. The only thing I could think to do to help my chances here may have seemed silly at first, but ended up having a massive impact. I took all of my armor off so that I would feel pressured to get hit less, and guess what? On my very first naked try, I killed him. Being naked made me play out of my mind. I'm no life coach, but just remember, if you're ever struggling out there, just get naked and everything will improve. So, was this fight better or worse in first person? Honestly, even though I was getting utterly spanked the whole time, it was still kind of fun. It didn't really make it better in any way, but that doesn't mean it wasn't cool. I went straight to Mount Gelmir after this to battle the oddball of the Shardbearers next. The infinite ladders were 
fun, and I did stop to fight the Falling Star Beast, even though I didn't actually have to. It was really fun. The whole anti-gravity thing was much more effective in first person. Still killed him first try, of course, but it was a very positive experience. I also had a positive experience against the Godskin Noble. I usually blow right past this guy, but this time he was a little more imposing, and I had to play a little smarter to pull out the win. That means it's just me and Snake Boy left in Volcano Manor, and I was not planning to spend much time here. And I didn't. The Serpent Hunter makes this fight a breeze, but for the first time in this video, I can very confidently say that this is way better in first person. I really enjoyed the fight, and though it was pretty easy, it was insanely cool looking, and Rykard's size wasn't a hindrance like Radon's was. All in all, great time. The last two shard bearers take some work to get to, so I got right on it and took the lift of rolled into the mountaintops of the giants. I made sure to stop and kill Shabriri, not only because I want his armor, but because I paid him. Now, I've made it clear that boss size can prove to be a big issue when in first person, and the fire giant is about as big as they come. That would logically lead you to believe that this boss fight was miserable, right? Well, I don't know how, and I don't really know why, but if I'm being honest, I think this fight was great. It was like he was so big that it didn't even matter I couldn't tell what was going on, because you wouldn't really be able to tell in third person either. This is yet another battle that goes in my better in first person box. I climbed the forge, touched a girl, and wound up in Farah Missoula. The first boss here is the God Skin Duo, and I was not even gonna try to do this one alone. I summoned Bernal to help me, and at first I was having a really hard time, but then I remembered that it is much easier if you both target just one of them at a time, and once I started doing that, it wasn't too bad. We'd kill one, and by the time they'd summon the other one back, they'd just be about dead. Being in first person made it a bit tougher to keep track of both of them, but to be fair, that's always been a problem with these bastards, so I feel pretty neutral about it this time. In just about every Elden Ring video, I mentioned that I get stuck in one of two spots, either Malekith or Melania. One of those two always gets in my way, and this time was no different. I walked into the Malekith fight and was feeling pretty confident. That confidence was bolstered when I destroyed his first phase. In his second phase, though, I only lasted a couple seconds. Fine, though. I was close on my first try. Surely I could do this. I couldn't. You know that scene from Doctor Strange where he... Uh, well, spoilers. Strange goes to bargain with Dormammu and he dies like a thousand times? That's what fighting Malekith felt like. Like I said before, this fight is usually tough for me, but I really think I was hindered by the whole first person thing. Malekith is like Morgoth on crack. He's maybe the most agile and difficult to follow boss, so I was constantly finding myself lost, and by the time I knew what was going on, it didn't matter, I was dead. I tried a couple things to get out of this slump. I got the Black Wet Blade and improved the bleed buildup on my swords, but that didn't help. I got the Ruins Greatsword, my favorite weapon in the game, and that didn't help. I tried to take a break and fight Placidus Axe for some runes, but that most definitely did not help, and so eventually I just had to wave the white flag for now and go try something else. That something else ended up being Nihal. I mean, I have to fight him eventually, so why not now? He wasn't the unstoppable force that Malekith was proving to be, but he was certainly no slouch. It was in this fight with Nihal that I remembered how much I loved the Ash of War and Paling Thrust, and so with that on my Nagakiba, I was able to close the distance much faster and I defeated him. I didn't mind this fight in first person, but I don't think it was really better in any way. With Nihal out of the way and the hidden medallion acquired, I went straight to Moog in the Moogwin Palace. Now, for the folks at home, I'd like you guys to place your bets on whether this fight was better or worse in first person. Everyone locked in their answers? Okay, great. This fight f***ing sucked. <laughs> It was much more reasonable with the Purifying Crystal tier, but it was impossible to comprehend anything I was seeing with the Blood Flame sh** all over my face, and Moog's weapon is so big that it's really hard to even see what he's swinging in. I got through the fight surprisingly fast, but it was absolutely worse in first person. That though gave me the pick-me-up I needed to face Malekith, and with the runes I had gotten from Nihal and Moog, I finally killed him. It still wasn't easy of course, but I did it, and it felt good. This fight very easily falls in the worse in first person bucket for me. With him dead, I was transported to the capital of Ash and began the fast track to beating the game. There's two bosses here. The first one, Gideon, is not usually any trouble. And if I can be honest, backstabbing him in first person felt so good. He deserves it. He didn't die on the first attempt though, which sucks because the first try is the only time when you get that free shot in, so I had to fight him fairly. He can be pretty annoying, but even in first person where his spells are flying into my actual eyeballs, he got his ass beat. Godfrey is the next boss, and if I can be frank, well, okay, I am frank, but dead ass 
class, Godfrey got absolutely f***ing destroyed. First try, low effort, easy clap. That being said, it was definitely worse in first person. Like I said about Goldfree earlier, it's just way too hard to tell what he's doing. If I wasn't already really good at this fight, then this would have been a miserable experience. I can't go beating the game yet though. I've still got an important stop to make. That stop is the Hailing Tree. And before I can fight Melania, I need to go through Loretta. Like Godfrey before her, she got taken down on the first try, which then led me right to the real final boss of Elden Ring, the Blade of Mikula, the Goddess of Rot, Melania. I was surprised right away at how little the first person perspective was interfering with this fight. I mean, I've gotten really used to being able to see what's going on, but Melania is close to the same size as our character, so I could actually follow her movements, unlike Morgod or Malekith. That being said, the first waterfall was a terrifying experience, and one that ended in my death. I remedied the waterfall issue by equipping the Vow of the Indomitable Ash of War on my buckler and spamming that when she would go in for the kill. It wasn't perfect, but it did keep me alive almost every time. After only a couple attempts, I was getting her into her second phase pretty consistently. Something clicked this time around against Melania. I will never be as good of a swordsman as her. She may be a fictional character, but that's all the more reason to concede that fact. I didn't have to be a better swordsman though, I just had to be better at something. I was finding a huge amount of success with Impaling Thrust, and so I would back off, wait for an opening, and then hit her with a thrust when it was safe. By being a better, I don't know, fencer, I was able to make this fight much easier for myself than I had in the past. And believe it or not, I think this one might actually be better in first person. I know I called Melania the real final boss, but I do still have one more boss fight to take care of. The first phase of the fight is against Radagon. Radagon doesn't really scare me anymore these days, and while him swinging that hammer at my actual face was a little unsettling, I wasn't really having a hard time against him at all. I'd pretty much gotten over the whole judging distance problem by now, so I was weaving between his attacks, and even though I forgot to take the bleed off my sword, Radagon and the Elden Beast aren't affected by bleed, I still messed him up on my first try. Then, of course, we are left with the Elden Beast. Remember when I was against the Fire Giant, and I said that he's just too big for the first person perspective to even make a difference? Well, the Elden Beast was in that same boat, and for maybe the first time ever, I had fun against it. It might not have been all because of the perspective change, it was probably just because it was something different, and that made the fight fresh, but I did enjoy myself, and that enjoyment only made the killing blow that much sweeter. I had defeated the big bads of Elden Ring, claimed the throne, and become Elden Lord. But I still need to answer the big question. Is Elden Ring better in first person? No. Definitely not. It was fun, don't get me wrong. I think that anyone that really likes Elden Ring should try this mod out if they're interested, but the third person perspective thing is definitely a way better experience, and I think that's for a few reasons. One, exactly what I had been complaining about this whole time, it is just way too hard to tell what's going on around you when you're in close quarters combat. Rolling gets disorienting, getting hit is way too jarring, and having to track enemies like this distracts from the free flow dance feel of Elden Ring's combat. Two, it takes away a sense of scale that third person excels in. When seeing a huge backdrop like Limgrave or Lanedale, it's more effective if we get to see just how small our character is when compared to the world around them. Getting to see what our character sees is a cool experience, but again, there's a reason they chose to pursue this better sense of scale. Third, and lastly, the biggest reason why Elden Ring is better in third person, the fashion. I can't see my damn drip when I'm looking out of my own eyeballs. Seriously, Elden Ring's armor doesn't do all that much for you anyways, so I'd better be able to look cool and see how cool I look. For real though, I think the first person perspective was incredibly cool to try, but objectively it is not any better than third person. I'd like to again thank the folks that made this mod, it was awesome and I appreciate all of your hard work. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Thank you for watching, GG's everyone.